a day in the life of the Copper Age in Britain. You wake up one day to the sounds of muffled feet outside, likely farmers going to their fields. You just moved into a new village as a coppersmith. You're the first coppersmith in this village. It's the year 2500 BC, but to you, it's just another regular day. You had been working in a neighboring village a few miles away. Your father was a coppersmith, and so was his father and his father. For as long as you can remember, you come from a family of coppersmiths. You had moved to the village at your father's request to spread the family influence and to marry the chief's daughter. You were hesitant at first, but you decided to comply with your father's wishes. Your village is only seven miles away from your previous home, but you feel far away from home, and you are planning on visiting your family the next winter when the harvests are completed. You're not a full-scale coppersmith. Not all of your time is dedicated to smithing copper. The community you moved into is not large enough to sustain your craft, so you supplement your copper production with planting and harvesting wheat while you raise a few pigs and a cow. You yourself do not know the mechanisms of copper smelting, but you know what happens if you heat it up enough and smack it with a wooden or stone hammer. But you're slowly killing yourself from the toxic fumes released during copper smelting. You'll eventually get jaundice, fevers, and your hair may turn green from the copper as it absorbs into your body. The copper is slowly poisoning you as you smelt it. And the diarrhea, vomiting, green hair, and fevers only makes your community suspicious of you. They're worried that you might be possessed or be around evil spirits. Your village is a bit smaller than the previous one you lived in, while this village only has 20 families. Your previous one had 55. Your home is made out of a thatched roof and a wattle and dub wall. Your home will eventually need a new roof you had some neighbors thatch the roof with you, but it's fallen into disrepair following a bad storm, and your neighbors seem more hesitant to help you. Unlike your previous village, your neighbors aren't as friendly and view you with suspicion. To them, you're a witch, crafting metal tools and artwork out of seemingly natural rock. They tend not to bother you due to your relationship with the chief's daughter but that doesn't stop them from occasionally yelling insults at you or walking away from you on the village road. You start your day with a bowl of gruel made of ground up wheat chaff and wheat kernels. A hearty breakfast, but easy to make. You're eager to start your day, so you quickly eat your food out of a wooden bowl rather than cooking it into a bread by the fire. Today you're going to receive a shipment of copper ore. You just ran out making some copper needles. You've been giving out free copper needles to your neighbors to gain their trust, but they still seem uneasy around you. You fire up your forge to prepare for the shipment and throw away whatever slag is left in the nearby woods. As you're walking back from the woods, you hear a sharp whistle and feel a sudden pain in your neck. Your eyes begin to go blurry, and soon it'll all go dark. You don't know it, but you've just been hit by an arrow in your neck. You don't know why, but your mind and body shutting down, and your last thoughts are of your family. You are one of many people that are the victims of witchcraft suspicion. While many might think of witchcraft as a product of the medieval age, the danger or the threat of witchcraft is an age-old phenomenon, and unfortunately, you are one of its earliest victims. The people of your new village feared you, though you made better tools and jewelry than they could produce. Your use of the forge and turning rock into metal was viewed with intense scrutiny and labeled as witchcraft. In the attempt to save your community from your demon tool usage, the community decided to remove you. The community was not used to the introduction of copper tools, though they had heard rumors of copper smelting and feared its potential. It is likely that the community will take your body and leave it in the forest or bury it to hide their crimes. While they felt justified in their actions, the chief to whom you were in familiar relations with 
would retaliate fiercely for this crime, and his family in the neighboring village may seek vengeance. It is likely they will never speak of this again. There have been many cases like this. In Roman Britain, some blacksmiths on the border of Scotland had been massacred, accused of witchcraft. In West Africa, following the advent of the Iron Age, blacksmiths had been brutally murdered in fear of their supernatural powers. And in the prehistoric Levant region, some coppersmiths were killed, either to take over their craft by rivals or in fear of their practice. In the Copper Age, mythology, demons, spirits, and the power of the ancestors were just as real as the sky or water that they needed to survive. It was widely believed that these entities would regularly insert themselves into the lives of humans to do harm or good. Though this is just one day in the life, with many others having better outcomes. Your role in the Copper Age of Britain was revolutionary, even if poorly understood by your contemporaries. The Copper Age wasn't much different to the Neolithic era, with your day being at the beginning of the Copper Age before it had been widely available. Though architectural elements such as long barrows and stone hinges are around, their usage and construction will eventually phase out. Domesticated plants would be widely available and we'd recognize today, such as wheat, barley, and peas. Domesticated animals would also be around that we'd recognize. Dogs, cats, cattle, sheep, and pigs. While to you life seems normal, with every generation the world around you is slowly changing. Religion, architecture, language, culture, and foods are always mixing and being adapted over time. 